I think we have a few of these still in prison. <laughs> so I know uh, today is the version of the University of San Diego. <laughs> I think it's Students can know uh, it's not related. Uh, they are not related to the students. Okay, so <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so, uh, let's start the uh, <clears throat> topic class. So, uh, okay. So uh, in the previous class, so we learned about the uh, data folding unit and uh, as, as a data unit, right? So actually, when we learned about the, the basic knowledge on the Python architecture, so we learned that uh, in order to reduce the, uh, in, in order to reduce the performance degradation by uh, data dependencies <coughs> in the data engine. So it, this pipeline architecture requires data folding path, right? So which means that, so actually we know that uh, if the archive instruction, so it, it means that automatic instruction is a scripted the processor. The pipeline the processor actually have result of the this instruction in at the end of the next week. So this result can be folded for the following instruction. So this is the folding path of the pipeline architecture. And then for not to support the data folding, uh, this is the hardware. So which means that the hardware requires the resources for data folding. So which means that we need to implement the data folding path. And then which means that, so as you can see, you can find the folding multiplexers at the, uh, in, in front of the input port of the ALU. So because the, the folded result can be so the, the result of the formal instruction can be folded into the, the input ports of the ALU. So which means that we need the multiplexers at the input of the ALU. So also, this, if we have multiplexers, then we need to generate the selection signals. So it's, it's these selection signals are Control signal, and then so uh, we need to generate the control signal. So control signals for these folding multiplexers are generated by folding unit. And then in the previous class, we learned how to generate the, these control signals, right? And then because of the corner cases, like the double data hazard, also the corner cases such as the uh, validity of the <clears throat> a destination register data. Like the, so we need to we need to check the validity of the the result of the formal instruction using the reg write signal. Also, we need to check the zero register, right? These are the corner cases for data folding. So we need to consider all corner cases. That's why the other implementation is uh, a little bit tricky because of these corner cases. So we need to include the, the condition, every condition for data folding, right? Then we need to generate the, the control signal for data folding. And also, if the formal instruction is the load instruction, then this data can be folded from the memory state, right? Because the, the load instruction needs to access data memory, so data memory has a delay. So actually the result of the load, load instruction uh, can be generated at the end of the memory state, right? So in this case, we need to detect the data hazard by load instruction. And then we learn how to control the pipelines of this pipeline processor. So, 
which means that in the uh, data hazard is detected, the uh, data hazard by load instruction is detected, then the load instruction needs to be propagated to the memory space, right? And then what the following instruction at the this end instruction. So end instruction needs to be stored in the idle staging. Then there is no instruction in the ex staging. So we need to generate the no. So no means the no operation for the ex staging. So because the, this end instruction is stored in the ID stage, the following instruction, the instruction in the I instruction fetch stage also need to be stored, right? It, it, it is similar to the conveyor belt. If the former worker, so if the former worker is uh, stop the working, then the following worker needs to stop for the working. So as we learned that the hazard detection unit is located in the ID stage. So which means that if the following instruction is in the ID stage, like the this end instruction. So if the following is oh, if the following instruction is in the ID stage and then load instruction in the Yes, stage and the data hazard needs to be detected. So, so how can we detect the data hazard by load instruction? We can detect the destination register RD of load instruction and then RS1 and RS2 of the following instruction. Okay, so when the following instruction is in the ID stage, then load instruction is in the all this stage, when then we can check the equality of the R, RD and RS1 and then RS2 and the RD. Then, if the this is the instruction number, the one of these instructions, for the, like the RS1 or RS2, are equal, then the following instruction is stored in the ID stage, and then the, and the load instruction is propagated to the memory stage, and the note. No operation is generated for ex stage. So we can generate the no using the by making all control signals zero, right? That's what we learned in the previous class. Okay, so now actually we learned how to optimize the, the order of an instructions using compiler. And then in the today's class, we will learn about the control hazard for people, uh, yeah, people learning about the control hazard. I will introduce the risk five simulation tool. Okay. And then I believe this simulation tool is helpful for you to understand the behavior of a box. Okay. That's why I explained about the this simulation tool. Okay. That's what we learned in the first class of the class, right? The computer system is composed of many layers, okay? And then we are covering the these layers, architecture layers or micro architecture layers. So computer architecture field actually covers the these layers. Also, each layer needs to interface with neighbor layers, that's why. We can also cover the, some lower layers like the logic layer. Also, we can the, the computer architecture field. The computer architecture field can also cover the operating system layer. Then, how can it work? So, how can we study the research ideas of the computer architecture? You know, the computer architecture also handles the also the hardware part, the computer architecture also covers the software part because the architecture is the interface between software part and then hardware part of the control system. So which means that we need to handle the hardware part. So also you are learning about the hardware part of the control system as processor. 
actually in chapter four, we are learning about the hardware architecture of a processor, this by processor. And <clears throat> so what is hardware? It means hard, right? So hard means the hardware means so we cannot modify the hardware, right? So we cannot modify the control processor chip such as CPU. <clears throat> it's very difficult. It's not, it's, it's not possible. It's, so I said it's very difficult, but it's not possible to <clears throat> modify the hardware part of the control system. It's very, very difficult. So for our research, then we can use the, some development tool, the development device, such as the disk photo. So as you can see, we can find the very uh, conference uh, uh, computer system board. So, but this board is, is, is different from the uh, normal computer system, right? But and then, so actually, <coughs> for our research, you know, we can use uh, this uh, uh, tool. So, this weird looking, so that uh, very complex hardware. So, actually, this hardware has the FPGA, it's a programming chip. So we can program some hardware part of the this control system, but it's very difficult, right? And then also it's it's not a real CPU. Then how can it work for the hardware research and the hardware study? You can use simulators. So simulator, so what is the architecture story? And then these simulators are called architecture simulators because we use the simulators for architecture studies. So, and what are simulators? Simulators emulate the behavior of computer processors or computer system. So, I said emulate. So, it, it means that it just, it just implement the behavior of the processor using software. So I believe if you are interested in some games, then I believe you I, I believe you have heard about the simulation game, right? So simulate what does the simulator mean? Simulation just uh, emulate uh, emulate the, some behavior of the object. Uh, some behavior of our society, something like that. So, and then it's also the same for the architecture simulator. Simulator just emulate the behavior of a processor. So it's software. So we can use the, the simulator for computer architecture research. And then it is also helpful for understanding the the real behavior of a processor or computer systems. Then we are learning about the disk file processor, right? So <clears throat> actually there are many kinds of uh, simulators. So uh, firstly, the, I will introduce about the assembly simulator. So uh, in chapter two, we learned about the instructions of this file, okay? So, which means that we learn about the assembly, assembly instruction of risk of ISM. So, actually, so most of you, I mean, most of us are uh, uh, using the ARM processors or uh, x86 processors, but usually for the uh, we use the x86 computer system for our study. Actually, we use the ARM computer systems for mobile devices. So, actually, so we can run the x86 assembly code on x86 computer system. So, you can execute the, you can write the assembly code if we know the assembly instructions of x86 either. Then we can write the F36 assembly code, and then we can execute the disassembly instructions on F36 computer system. But unfortunately, the risk file, the eyes of the risk file, 
is different from the idea of the SMT. So which means that we can, even though we write the list of file assembly code, we cannot execute this code on the, our computer system because most of our computer system equips exerting CPU. So how can you simulate or how can we run the our risk five assembly code? We can use the simulator. So the simulator emulates the execution of risk five instruction. So which means that it's just emulation. So we can write the, the risk five assembly code, but which means that every line has risk five instruction so this assembly simulator executes the every line of uh, disk file instruction and then generate the result of these instructions using software okay so it's a very similar to the virtualization tool so what is, what is the virtual machine so the Maybe. So have you heard about the virtual box or parallels or VML? So actually we can uh, install the operating system on this virtual machine, right? So which means that virtual machine works like the independent computer systems on the real computer hardware, right? So it's very similar. Even though we don't have the risk of five computer, but we can execute the risk five instruction using this software. Okay. So you can find uh, many uh, risk five assembly simulators such as the Jupyter, Lux. So Camel, Camel is the very popular uh, virtualization software. So it's an open source software. That it's, it's, it's not it. It is different from the, uh, the virtual virtual uh, with uh, virtual machine software such as the virtual box or parallels, but it's the very popular open source uh, virtualization software. So we can also use the risk five camera. But actually, I will introduce the Jupyter. So it's a very fancy, fancy looking tool. So actually, you can. You can find the, some instructions here, also you can find the registers. Okay, so as I explained, when an instruction is executed or executed by a processor, then this instruction, this, this instruction changes state of register file or memory. So you can find how register files are changed by instruction okay also uh, so also we can use the graphical architecture simulators so, so i will introduce about the uh, why so, so this is the uh, graphical risk five uh, architecture simulator so which means that you can see the how the architecture will a typical with to buy five stages by processor using Y. So it's very, I think it's very good too, because so actually using this uh, right uh, simulator, we can execute the disk five instruction, and then we can also see which instruction is executed on which pipeline stages. So I will just show the so you can you can download the, this right uh, architecture tool from this link. Okay. So this is also the open source. And then also you can execute the, this right tool on the uh, with, on Windows or on Mac, I believe can be executed on Mac. So and then it's very good too because so I I will show you. So okay. So 
this is the uh, uh, window of the uh, line two. So you can find the architecture of the five stages for five patterns. So we are learning about the architecture of the five stages with the five pipeline patterns, right? But this architecture is a little bit different from the architecture uh, that we are learning. But, but it's it's a similar, I said it's similar, but it's not exactly the same. So as you can see, you can find the instruction fetch stage. So I I cannot I cannot. So instruction fetch stage here, ID stage here, and then execution, and then memory and write text stage, right? But so you can find the instruction here. But so you can find the register file. So and then actually. If you click the, this icon, you can select the target processor architecture. So you can select the thing, so it is very small, so it's just the font is very small. So you can select the single cycle processor, or so you can select, select the five stage processor without coding or M or header detection units. So you can find the different kind of processor, processor architecture. So let's select the single type of processor. So it's a great tool. So you can find the data path element and the data path of single type of file processor. So and as I mentioned, this is not the same to the, the process architecture we are learning for this course, but it's similar. Okay. So, single cycle is, 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 a, is a little bit simple. So, so if you click the, this, this icon, then you can see which instruction is executed by a processor, right? So you can find the, this is the instruction, the load word F5, A0. So you can find that. So register, so data in registers are changed by instruction. But the, sim the single cycle processor is uh, simple, so we can use the uh, five stage processor. So, so this is the picture of the five stage processor, and then also you can find the holding uh, box, box is the holding multiplexer. So it's very similar, similar to the five stage processor that uh, <clears throat> we are learning. So, and then you can find the instruction here. The instruction here, right? So if you click, if you, okay, so this is the editor. So this is either the instruction so that I am, I am using. So if you click on this icon, you can find that instructions are propagated to the next stage, right? And then click, click, click. So, so that actually I made this code, so you can find that. So so destination register with this load was installed. X of six, right? Oh, yes. oh, this is just a fake code. <laughs> so it's uh, actually uh sorry. I I think it uh so actually <laughs> I I I write the code uh, actually for your lab assignment. Actually, so we we are we use the this code for the the last level assignment, but actually this is the bug. So I know, as you know, so I I said this is the open source program. So and then so this program has uh, some bugs. So uh, what is the bug? Actually, so you can find that the uh, uh, 
so this n n i is not certainly scored in the i is stated, right? Because of this load of instruction. For why? I think I said it is the bog. Bog of the destroying. So actually, uh, this, so this is the register number of the load instruction meters take, and then the, the immediate number for this headline step, headline instruction is six. But so actually, because this is the immediate number, the so headline instruction can execute the, this headline instruction can be executed. So I, you can find that there is no data dependency between load of instruction and headline instruction, right? There is no dependencies, right? But this is the bulk thing. So destination where this number of load one load order is the same, and then actually this part is the check the six is the this immediate number. Right? So actually uh because of the bulk. So every instruction is stored in the I state. Okay. Oh, so actually, uh, uh, in the last level assignment, so I I will provide the, this code. So in the last level, actually, the where is the? Is it because? Um, wait. So it is because actually for the data header detection, we need to check the RD, RD of where it is the I type instruction. And then load one is the I type instruction, right? So we need to check the RD and RS1 or RS2, right? So if the following instruction is the R type instruction, we need to check the RD of the load instruction with the RS1 field and RS2 field, right? But in this example, the, the following instruction is the ADA instruction. So ADA instruction is the I type instruction. I type instruction for the, the immediate field of the I type instruction occupies the uh, field number 31 to field number 20, right? So it occupies the this field bit. So actually, for the not check the data header, we need to also know the check the, the type of instruction. So if the instruction type is the R type instruction, then we need to check the both RS1 and RS2. So if the type of instruction is I type, then we need to check only RS1. But this simulator check the both in the field. Is field and is field, even though the following instruction is the I type instruction. That's why I said this is a bulk. Okay. I intention I intentionally uh, make this instruction to check the validity of your result, the last level session. So this is a bulk, but it's but just. So even though this is the ball, but this ball does not generate the incorrect result. So only the cycle is wasted. One cycle is wasted incorrectly, but it's the performance issue. Uh, actually, the final result of the code is uh, 
output is uh, the same. So you can also check the uh, like here, here, here. Uh, you can see how these structures propagate through the five uh, pipeline stages. Okay, it is very helpful for understanding the behavior of a uh, five stage pipeline processor. Uh, branches, huh? so also you can find the so so in this example you can find that the destination register of load of this person is 11 and then EME is a branch instruction branch instruction is using the result from load of instruction yes it Branch instruction is stored in the IDC. So we can check how instructions are stored in the pipeline processor. Also, we can check the region in the register file using this simulator. So I think this simulator can be very helpful for understanding the real behavior of the pipeline processor. Okay. So actually, as I mentioned, the basic idea of pipelining is very simple, right? You can just split the required steps of uh, processor execution into the uh, multiple stages of pipeline, uh, pipeline architecture. But even though the basic idea is very simple, then we need to check, we need to cover the corner cases like the data folding, Hazard. Actually, controlling data coding or data hazard, but also we will learn about the control hazards. So these parts are the difficult parts in the pipeline architecture. Okay. But if you use the graphical simulation tool, then I believe it will be very helpful for, for you to understand the real behavior of pipeline architecture because it's a graphical tool. Okay, so <clears throat> let's learn about the control hazard. So, what is the control hazard? So, you can find that, oh, this is the, these are hazards, and then this is the control hazard. So, I said that the first word represents the Reasons of for hazard. So hazard is the event that waste the clock cycle, and then we explain the reasons for hazard using the, the first word. So control hazard, so which means that in a pipeline processor, clock cycles are wasted because of control, control instruction. So control instructions mean branch instructions and jump instruction, okay? So which means these instructions change with the whole and counter of a processor, okay? These instructions are called control instruction. And then because of the control instruction, the clock cycles can be wasted, right? Because the result of a branch instruction is determined in memory spacing. So this is the example. So you can find that oh, this is the BQ and then you can find the following instruction and then this number is a program counter. It's a program counter number. So at clock cycle one the branch branch instruction is fetched. So which means that the BQ is in the instruction fetch stage. When the branch instruction is in the instruction fetch stage, you don't know the result of a branch instruction, right? Because the branch in, the, the result of a branch instruction is calculated while branch the branch instruction is in the ex stage, right? 
right? So we don't know because we don't know the result of the branch instruction. We don't know which instruction will be executed after the this branch instruction. So usually we just the processor just execute the next instruction. So what is the next instruction? The PC becomes the P current PC plus four. So the PC is changed to the four in four. And then the very next instruction, and the instruction is fetched from the instruction memory. So when the branch instruction is in the ID stage at clock cycle number two, the next instruction and the instruction is fetched, but the, the, the program counter of this next instruction is the 44, the very next instruction. Okay, so which means that the processor, this processor, which is the next instruction, as if the branch, the condition of branch instruction is false, right? If the condition of branch instruction is false, then we just execute the very next instruction, not the target instruction, right? So because we don't know the result of the branch instruction, but usually the processor just executes the next instruction, then the next instruction is fetched. And then at clock cycle number three, the branch is in the EX stage. So which means that this is the BEQ, then we this processor performs subtraction, right? And then we don't know the result because the branch instruction is in the EX stage. So it is being calculated by SAU. So the next instruction is also fetched. So and is here and then or is here. This is the just the next instruction. Next instruction. It's not a target of branch instruction. So after the ALU, we can know the result of the branch instruction, true or false at clock cycle number four, right? Are you, following, are you following me? So at, in the memory stage, we, we can just know the result of a branch instruction. So this result will be given to the program counter. But when a branch instruction is in the memory stage, the program counter is also updated for the next instruction, right? So the PC and the branch instruction is in the memory stage, the current PC is the 42. So the add is here and then or is here and is here. The problem is that if the branch condition is true, then we this processor needs to update the program counter as the target of the branch instruction. So we assume that the target of the branch instruction is 72. So, so when the branch instruction is the memory stage or a processor, get to know, get to know the result of the branch instruction. Then the, the next PC, is updated as the PC plus target of the branch, that means 72. So which means when the branch instruction is right back stage, then the current PC is updated by the target of the branch instruction, the 72. So the correct instruction, is fetching. So this is the target of the branch instruction. Okay. So which means when the branch, so in this processor, when the branch instruction is in the right to fetch stage, processor just fetch the target of the instruction. 
target of branch is complete, the result of a branch is true. Okay. What's the problem? Based on the uh, based on the result of the branch instruction, the current instruction is the this instruction, right? The target of the branch instruction. But this processor fetches the fetch the incorrect instruction, three incorrect instruction. So what should we do? Is a incorrect instruction. So we need to cancel these instructions because these instructions are incorrectly fetched by the processor. So which means when the branch instruction is taken, so taken means that the taken, taken means that the branch condition is true, then three instructions are incorrectly fetched. So processor needs to cancel these instructions. So three cycles are wasted. Oh, it's just three cycles. <laughs> so you may think that, oh, this is just, just the three cycles, but this, this is very critical for the performance of the processor. So for example, so when the branch is taken, three cycles are wasted. So the CPI of the taken branch is, what is the CPI of this taken branch? It's four, it becomes four, right? Because three cycles are wasted. So one cycle is for the branch instruction itself. So CPI becomes four so for the taken branch. So we know that if the CPI is bigger than one, the performance will be degraded. The control part tether is actually very critical for the performance of a processor. It is because so you, you, you may think that all oh, branch instruction is very is, is not frequently observed in the process, but it's not true. Branch instructions are very frequently observed in the processor, so which means that when the branch, branch is taken, then these clock cycles are wasted. So for example, this this even this code i equals zero, i is less than 100, i is plus plus, then a equals b plus c. So this is the iterative loop. So actually in order to implement it, implement the, this iterative loop, we need to use the branch instruction at the end of the, this loop. So what's the problem? The problem is that, so we know how oh, this loop is repeated 100 times. The branch is actually here, so it's a branch is here. The branch is taken 100 times, right? So the very next instruction is the instruction after that is branching. But for this iterative loop, the branch is taken 100 times so for the taken branch, this this processor waste three cycles. So this is a very critical for the performance of a processor. So then how can we solve this problem? Okay. Um, the 예, 예를 들면 패치를 하고 그 다음에 다시 어 추운해 하면 다시 얘를 또 패치를 하는 거예요. 똑같이. So this question is that so in this case, so in this case the target of the branch instruction can be sub instruction. So which means the so this the program counter for this sub instruction is the uh is a PC. 
the PC, and the PC plus O, and the PC plus A. So, and then I said that when the bridge is taken, then the three sides is a wasted. So, but in this case, you know, so there can be some another, another instruction, maybe more, more here. So in this case, a processor fetch the follow instructions add sub and more. So three instructions are fetched. Then the processor gets to know the result of the branch instruction is true. Then processor fetch the sub instruction again. Okay, it works like this. So. The target of the branch instruction can be any instructions in the processor. Okay. So I said that for the taken branch, the CPI is bigger than one, and then actually the CPI is four in this case. So we need to reduce the penalties by branch instruction. So we, it means that we need to reduce the Wasted number of wasted cycles by taken branch instruction, right? Because when a branch is taken, the three cycles are wasted. Then, how can you reduce the, this case, uh, these, these wasted cycles? What is the problem? What is the problem of this taken branch? The problem is that. The result of a branch is result rate, late, sorry, late. What does that mean? Because the true or false, the result, this is the result of the branch instruction. Because the result of branch instruction is result when a branch instruction is in the memory space, is processor missed wasted clock cycles, three clock cycles, which means that if the branch, if we know the result of a branch instructions earlier, then we can reduce the wasted cycle. You understand? If, if, if the result of a branch instruction is result earlier, then we can reduce the wasted cycles. How? So this is the example. So in order to check the equality, the like the A equal B, then we use the ALU, right? So we use the sub in sub operation of ALU. So ALU is in the EX stage. But we can easily check the equality of Two bits. How? We can use the exclusive OR gate, not subtract. So if we use the exclusive OR, then the A, B, and C, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So if the two bits are 0, 0, then C becomes 0, and then two bits are different, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the uh, Output of exclusive one gate becomes one, and then if the one one becomes the zero. So what does that mean? If the bit number is the same, then output of the exclusive one becomes zero. So which means in order to check the equality, so if for the big instruction, if we want just to check the equality of two numbers, we can use the Bitwise exclusive OR. And now, how do you bitwise exclusive OR is very fast? So, actually, so it's a, it's, it's a hard issue. So, in order to uh, implement the adder or subtractor, and actually, the carry is totally good. So, that's why the delay of this uh, adder or subtractor. Uh, longer than the delay of the basic logic gate. But exclusive Y is the basic logic gate, and then we can just perform the bitwise exclusive OR. So, which means that 
the equality of one can be applied to the each bit in parallel. Okay, so we can easily check the equality of two bits. Okay. Using the exclusive or again. So, solution is that we can add the equality check logic just after the register file. We call for the BQ instruction. So, when the BQ is executed, then BQ just read the two opponents from the register file, right? Like the x1 and x, x3, and then we can connect the equality check logic just after the register file. So, and then as I said, the delay of this equality check logic is very small, it's very short. Uh, so, we can uh, implement uh, this equality check logic inside of uh, instruction decoding stage, the ID stage. So, also, we can know the following uh, this instruction within the within the branch instruction because the instruction is coded in the ID stage. So what's the what is the benefit? Oh we can know the result of a branch instruction in the ID stage. Okay. And then the target of the branch. In order to uh, calculate the target of the branch instruction, we include the additional add-on, right? So actually, the, in order to get, uh, calculate the target of the branch instruction, we don't require ALU. So we can calculate the target of the branch instruction in the ID stage. So at the Late part of the ID stage, then we can know the result of a branch instruction, like a true or a false, and then also we can know the target of a branch instruction. So, which means that we can calculate the, the next PC at the late part of the ID stage, then and the branch instruction is here, then we can just fetch the target of the branch instruction. You understand? So in this, if we enhance the, the architecture of the, this pipeline processor for PQ, then only this instruction is incorrectly if the branch is taken, so you can just cancel out this instruction. So what's the benefit? If the branch is taken, only one cycle is wasted. Okay, we can reduce the CPI for the taken branch. So we can see, we can improve the performance of this processor. But this processor also has uh, a performance issue. What's the problem? The problem is that so actually, so uh, actually, you know, in the first edition of this book, I did not handle the uh, this issue, but I also found the issue. This uh, uh, data board data header issue by the enhanced processor. Okay, so the problem is that actually we implement the data folding multiplexer at the in front of input port of the ALU. The problem is that the branch is the result of a branch is checked when a branch is in the I this stage. The problem is if the like the this this one like the B. So this is the add x one x two x three and then B Q x one 
it's five in target. The problem is that, so in this case, the branch requires the data from the add instruction. But this branch instruction cannot cannot receive the data from the end instruction by folding path. It is because the folding path is implemented in front of AAU in the ID stage. You understand? So, so if the branch is so like the X1, X1 minus X5 is performed by AAU, it's the original design, then this data can be folded from the add instruction because we use branch instruction use uses the AAU in the original design. But in the enhanced design, the, the result of a branch is checked just after the register file. So we cannot use the data folding class for the branch instruction. So this is the new data handled by enhanced process architecture. Okay. So because of this issue, the uh, actually, you know, branch instruction received the result from the former instruction, like this example, then the branch needs to be stored until the this result is written back to the register file. Okay, we can because we cannot use data folding class for the enhanced branch branch implementation. So this is the new data hazard by uh, enhanced uh, processing. So actually, if you see the uh, right simulator, so this is the right simulator. So you can find that uh, you can find that the branch unit is here, okay? Just after the folding multiplexing, which means that the branch, branch instruction can receive the result from the formal instruction via this folding path. Actually, I, I prefer this design because branch instruction can receive the we do the formal instruction, and then the branch, the, the condition of a branch is just, just as the is folding multiplexing. Okay, so actually in the in the last lab assignment, so actually we we, we will design the, this type of process. Okay. So this is the new data hazard by branch instruction. So and then this is the uh, another example of the branch union in the EX stage. Okay. So in this case, so, so which means that uh, instead of ALU, so we can use the dedicated branch union. So because we can just check the uh, equality of equality of the branch, or you can just you can quickly the perform the sub instruction for the PGE or PLT, the other branch instruction. So if we just use the dedicated branch branch detection unit, and here after the folding path, the penalty penalty for this is architecture is done. If the branch is taken, then two cycles are wasted, and then branch is not taken, then there is no penalty. So it's true. So if the branch is not taken, then you can just use the 
next instruction that is these instructions are correctly fetched instructions right so in this case we don't need to cancel them these correctly fetched instructions but if the branch is equal then we need to cancel them incorrectly fetched instruction these are the penalties by taken branch then these penalties are called control hazards okay? And then I explain how to reduce the uh, penalties by control hazard. So, which means that we can just add the, the equality check unit just after the you know, register file. This is the, the, uh, the possible. This is the another um, uh, one candidate way, but it generates the new data hazard. So, that's why I don't like the, this, this design. So, okay. so, so we don't decide to, uh, not to reduce the, the control hazard by branch instruction, we can use the prediction idea. So, this prediction idea is a kind of a new idea, it's a somewhat enhanced idea. So, but this is also very critical for the performance of the process. So, what is the prediction? So, the first, we need to know the why the performance is degraded by weak branch instruction. Why? Because clock cycles are wasted. Several, so which means several. If the branch is taken, two or three cycles are wasted. Okay, so because so this design with the two cycles, and then the ori the original design, the in the original design, the three cycles are wasted by taken branch, and then as I explained. It is wasted because the, the result of a branch is reserved late. That's the problem. Because the late resolution of the branch instruction. Then how can we solve this problem? If we we can, if we can know the result of the branch instruction earlier, then we can reduce the performance degradation by branch instruction, but it is also limited by other implementation, right? Then we can use the a technique called prediction. So how can you apply the prediction? So what is the prediction? The prediction means that, oh, we don't know the result of the future event, but we can, if we can predict the result of a future event with high probability then we can predict some result earlier what does that mean oh so for example this is this is equal so for i equals zero i less than 100 i plus plus and then so if the, this iterative loop is executed in a processor, then I said that the big, big or branch instruction is used at the end of the, this iterative loop. And then we know, oh, by this branch instruction, so this branch instruction is taken 100 times, like taken, 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 and false. It's not taken at the end of the iteration loop. So actually, if we see the this code, we can predict the result of the branch instruction with high probability. Why? Right. We can just predict the branch instruction. And then this prediction hit rate is very high. If the prediction is a true, then it is called hit. And if the prediction is not true, then it is called miss. So 
the good things for the branch instruction is that we can predict the result of branch instruction with high hit rate. Okay, so in this case, we can apply the prediction pattern. So for think like this, if the prediction rate is just the 50%, then we don't need to apply the prediction because it's just uh, it's actually the result of the range instruction is true or false if we just uh, randomly uh, it check, uh, select the result of the branch and the true or false, then the hit rate is, can be 50%, right? But if the prediction rate is about the uh, 98%, it's very high, then we can apply the prediction pattern. So, and then what is the benefit of the prediction pattern? If the branch instruction is just detected, the instruction is decoded, and we can know, oh, this instruction is the branch instruction. And then if we can predict the result of a branch instruction with high probability, like the, oh, this is the branch instruction. And then we can predict, oh, this branch will be taken. It's true. Then we can jump to the target instruction by this branch instruction. We could. And then if the prediction is true, it's a, it's, a, it's a hit, oh, the real result is true. Oh, then we don't need to cancel the next instruction in this case. Prediction can be missed. So each means that the result of a prediction is not same to the result of a real branch instruction. Then it's the same, there, there is no harm. So in this case, the instructions are incorrectly fetched. And we can just cancel them is incorrectly fixed instruction. So penalty is the same to the taken branch of the original design, right? So that is the benefit of the branch, uh, branch, branch prediction. So if the prediction is true, so which means that if the prediction is a hit, then we can reduce the penalties by taken branch. So if pre the prediction is false, so it's missed, it, then just the same penalties are applied. So same cycles are wasted. So that is the benefit for the branch instruction, a branch prediction. Okay. Then how can you apply the uh, prediction? How can you uh, predict the some future event. We can predict the result of a future event based on the past result. Right, it's like the weather, weather forecasting. So we can forecast the weather based on the some, uh, location of the cloud, but so it is based on the some past result. So we can just predict the, the future event based on the past event. It's the same for the branch instruction. So, so one, so we can design one bit predictor. So it means that well, this is the branch instruction one and the branch instruction two and branch instruction three. Then we can check, check the just the past result, the very past result of the branch instruction. So it means that oh so for this branch number one branch instruction the the past event is is taken. Then processor can expand or the future event can be also true. And then if the first result of the branch branch num number two is false, then processor just expect predicts that the future event for this branch number two is false. So that is the one bit predictor. We can apply the one bit predictor for the uh, iterative loop. 
Dan itu pulu. Oi. Dan itu pulu. I under. I floss. And then this one. So, for branch will be here. And then, if we just see the behavior with this branch, so we can know that oh, branch will be taken, taken through, 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 and then hundreds of times through, and then both. Right. So if we use the one bit branch predictor, so we can just check the, the very first past event. So the first limit, let us assume that the, the branch prediction is initialized as the false. So in this case, the branch is predicted as the false. So each wrong, it's missed, missed once, and then for the second iteration, second iteration, the past event was true. So in this case, the result of a branch instruction is predicted as true because it just checked up only one past event. So what is the result of the prediction? Or oh, the so this branch is predicted as a true is a taken branch and then real event is also true oh this is hit the same or oh, it's a true or oh, it's a pretty case the true so hit 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 and then the last iteration loops it, is, it can be also predicted as a true but real event is a false so it is missed so what is the prediction rate? The hit rate for this branch prediction is 98%, right? Because with this one bit branch prediction, the hit event is the 98, the number of hit is 98 out of 100. The hit rate is the 98%. So if the prediction rate is very high, so we can predict the middle double branch instruction very accurately. That is the benefit of the branch instruction. So as I mentioned, if the process of no oh, this current instruction is the branch instruction. The branch instruction is in the ID stage. Then oh, we just predict the the behavior of this branch is result of the branch is true or false with a high probability. So if the, this, um, <clears throat> this prediction is true, then we just waste one cycle okay, with the branch prediction. Okay, that is the benefit of the branch prediction. So we can just check the Two constitutive parts in that is a two bit predictor. Okay, so unlike the, this one bit predictor, we just check the, the very uh, the one past event. So two bit predictor just to check the two past event. Okay, and then it looks like the, the saturated counter. So it starts from the zero zero, and then if the branch is taken. The state is changed to the zero one. Let's take one zero, then take one zero. Then it comes to the one one. And then there are four states by the this two bit predictor. So and then if for the, this lower two states, then branch is predicted as the not taken, so it is false. And then for the, this upper two states, the branch is take, predicted as the taken, so it's a true. Okay, so this is the two bit predictor. So I explain about the branch prediction, but we also need to know the target of the branch. Okay, because in order to execute the branch instruction, firstly, we need to know the 
Reader to the right and the control for a force. Also, we need to know the target of the branch instruction. But this target of the branch instruction can be also predicated with a very high power of probability. Why? Branch like x1, x2, and then um, the immediate number. Actually, when a branch is firstly executed, we know. We know the target of the branch instruction, right? We can calculate the branch target of the branch in some like the PC plus immediate number, right? And then this value is the same for the same branch instruction, right? The PC is the same, and then immediate is the also constant number, which means that the target of the branch instruction is always the same, usually the same, always. Usually the same. Okay. So we can also store the target of the branch instruction. And then for the when the branch is predicated, then we can also use the this stored target of the branch instruction. So this is called the branch target buffer. So this is the uh, example of the prediction technology. So with the prediction technology, then we can also improve the performance. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I will stop here. Uh, any questions? Okay. Well, thank you for your attention, and then see you in the next class. Thank you.